How's it going everybody, Nick here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to route your audio interface inside of Ableton Live. Let's go. Okay, I have a brand new live set opened up right here, and in order to get to the section where you can route your audio interface, you need to go to the Preferences panel. Under the word Live, you click on that, click on Preferences, and the panel opens up right there. There's all kinds of things inside the Preferences panel. It's really important you know where that is, because everything about your MIDI is in here, your plugins, where everything's routed as far as it's reading sounds, all kinds of stuff. The look and feel of Ableton Live, it's all inside of the Preferences panel. Now we're gonna go to the Audio tab, which is the second one down on the left here, Audio. This is where all this stuff is located. So the driver type is Core Audio. That's what's almost always that. Below that is the Audio Input Device or the Audio Output Device. Here at my home studio, I'm using a Universal Audio Apollo and it shows up right here, you can see it. The input device is the Apollo. The output device is also the Universal Audio Thunderbolt. Same thing, that's the Apollo. But if I open up the input device, you'll see a couple of other things here. Built-in microphone. Say I didn't have the Apollo connected to my computer right now. I would just be using the in and out of the computer itself. That's built-in input or built-in output. Pro Tools Aggregate, if you're using Pro Tools in connection with Live, you can use that kind of stuff. But you don't need to worry about that right now. You just need to worry about whatever your audio interface is, whatever brand it is, or the built-in microphone input and output of the computer itself. That's it, pretty much. So I have the input set to my Apollo. I have the output set to my Apollo. Just below those two things, you'll see input config and output config. This is where you tell it how many inputs and outputs you want to use. So. I only need two inputs in this particular little setup I have right here. So it just says mono inputs one and two or stereo inputs. When you want more inputs, all you do is just turn them on. Live has the same look in a lot of different areas of its DAW. So off is always grayed out. Orange is always turned on, okay? Grayed out, off, orange, on. So just turn on however many inputs you want to use. Your mono inputs on the left, your stereo inputs on the right. There you go. Now let's go back out and configure the output outputs. The output outputs. Hit the output config. This is where all your outputs are configured, right? So I have all of my stereo outputs. I really only need two on this particular little setup here, but you can have as many as whatever your interface can handle. So this goes all the way up to 10 outputs and these are the mono outputs on the left. Same thing as the input. You just turn on however many you want to use then cancel out of that. The other things I definitely want to mention are your in and out sample rate. So I'm using 48K here, which is kind of a middle of the road one, but you can go all the way up to 96, 192 on this particular setup I have here, which is really high res. I always keep the default SR and pitch conversion on. No point to having it off, okay? Latency, this is very important. So. Right now it's set to 512 samples. That's sort of a middle of the road thing. When the sample rate is really high, the more stuff you can have going on at the same time on your computer, more plugins, more stuff, more tracks, more everything, okay? The lower the sample rate, the less latency you have when you're recording into Ableton Live, okay? Like you're singing into it. If you have a high sample rate, you're gonna hear a delay. You can also see when I change the sample rate, Right below it, it says input latency. Right now it's set to 16.8 milliseconds. Output latency, 11.1 .1 milliseconds. When I change the sample rate, those numbers will change. Check it out. See, down to 128, it's, there's less, less input latency. Down all the way to 32, there's a lot less. But then when I go all the way up to 2048, the latency is pretty long, all the way up to 48.8 milliseconds. So, Middle of the road is generally good. I'd say 256 to 128 is fine when you wanna play and record into Ableton Live, okay? The driver error compensation, I always leave at zero. I never touch that. And the rest of these numbers below, the, the test tones and all that kind of stuff, never touch that either. You pretty much just wanna worry about your input and output device. Make sure you have that on the correct thing. You configure your inputs and outputs right, right below that. Make sure you set your sample rate to whatever you're gonna be using. And you can always go back in and change the samples. Whether you have it at 256, if it's not working right, just go back into this preference setting and change the samples to a higher and or lower number to fit what you're doing at that time. 
there you go. That's how you route your interface inside of Ableton Live. I hope you found this video tutorial useful, and I hope to see you back here again soon. Take care, everybody.